Good day, hi, and welcome. Well, it's that time again. Jam night number eight. All right, here we go. Or open night. Well, it might be a bit of a jam night tonight because uh, the host tonight is going to be uh, one of the more lively guys, I'm assuming. All right, here we go. But first, I'm going to get back out of here. Or squishing anything. All cats and dogs counted for. They're all lazy in the house now anyway, so we have to worry about them. And we're off. Clean my dirty windshield. Sort of. Smudge it. Whatever. <laughs> I gotta fix my uh, wiper sprays. Okay. So. Got everything. Ugh. My dad plowed the road. A lot easier on the vehicle coming down the road now. Now, just so you know, at some point, I'm just going to stop talking about everything. I, man, there's a whole bunch of bikes going. Trikes and bikes. I want to make a hell of a racket. And anyway, uh, I'm going to stop talking. Why? Because I'm about to hit a milestone with this thing. My mileage is at four, 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 one, three. So when it's all fours across the board, I want to take a picture of it. I don't care where I am. I got my camera here. Hopefully I'll be able to do it when it hits the four, four, four. But uh, yeah, so. <laughs> That's one. That's one. Oh, we got lots to discuss this week, boys and girls. Um, there's people to honk at. Somebody's got a surfboard out. I don't know why any landlubber this far in off the coast would have a surfboard, but they got a surfboard. I think it's just one of those big paddle boards. Not a real surfboard. And uh what have I got going on? It's not out. Nobody's out. What's going on here? Oh, that's a big dog. <coughs> Like the guy was doing some digging again. <laughs> it's all sweating. They got a freaking green day there. There we go. A lot of people out today. Why is everybody out making me horn, honk my horn all the time? Ah, anyway. Um, it's that time of the evening. Okay, so we're off with a jam night. So last week, let's recap last week. Last week was a fun week. Uh, the host, the guy and the girl, I believe they were from... I want to say PEI or New Brunswick, but it could have been PEI. They're there, and they came up here because they heard about this exceptional jam night that I go to all the time. It's a lot of fun, this jam night, right? And they came up, they tried it once, they ended up moving up here, not just because of the jam night, but just because, you know, it's a nice place to live, you know? And um, it was a fun week last night. I had the mandolin out. But tonight, did I bring my guitar? No. Did I bring my mandolin? No. What did I bring? I brought bringing my Lionhead violin. Yes. Yes. Tonight will be a very strange night for some because the three songs I got picked are not typical violin songs. Well, one is. Uh, one's an instrumental and well arranged on the violin. I guess the speed limit just isn't good enough. <laughs> I pass me. I wish somebody passed me when I'm trying to honk at people. Then they think I'm mad at them. You know, so I'm not mad at you. Just honking, that's all. What's wrong with a good honking once in a while? You know, everybody likes a good honking once in a while. I'm just saying. Anyway. So, first song of the night. Well, it's not really a song, it's an, uh, a rendition of an instrumental that I can half ass play. And that's, well, the Pirates of Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay. And uh, basically, I'm just going to do a very short little rendition of that. I really couldn't think of a good third tune to, to play and sing the violin with uh, for this, this time around, but I was jumping between three instruments, okay? And it's like, if the violin doesn't stay in tune, well, maybe I'll bring my mandolin out. But then it's like, I don't want to carry two instruments, right? And once you're on stage, it's not like, okay, hold on a second, I'm going to run out and grab my mandolin and come back in. Uh, no, once you're in there, you're in there, right? Uh, once you're on stage, you're, once you're on the stage, you're on the stage. So, 
there is a ho, ho, bleh, bleh, speak boy speak uh, there is a uh, house guitar there okay there usually is and because of that I, get, I got three songs off the top of my head that well I could just throw those three out I played them for years and years and years and that would be uh, possibly wait by white lion uh, that would, I think would be cool to pull out probably tonight because it's but I want to do these other songs because I think tonight's going to be the night for because there's going to be a band there right so you know it might be a three piece band whatever but it means the drums are going to be on the stage again usually when the drums are on the stage I don't like to do slow songs you know what I mean because it's like you don't get that opportunity all the time so it's like uh, I want I want to liven it up I want to do some metal head stuff or whatever you know like take advantage of the drummer but that's not what I want to do tonight. Tonight, this is a stand on your own type of night. Um, because the second song, although I've played it before, it's such a great tune. Uh, it goes back to the 1970s, probably 1976 to be exact. I think I was three years old. And that band, Teresa's covered it. And it's called Rasputin, or Ra Ra Rasputin, whichever you want to call it. And it's such a great song. It's about the legendary monk Rasputin uh, in Russia, right? That was pretty nefarious. He was up to no good all the time. Uh, and, you, you know, uh, but I've learned how to play it and sing it at the same time. And boys and girls, it's epic. It's scary. It's loud. It's obnoxious. It's, it's cool. It's powerful. It's everything. A violin guy singing with a violin should be. It can stand on its own. It, it, I don't need a band behind it. It'd be cool with it. A well-rehearsed band behind it, but I won't need one. I won't need one. This is enough to get the crowd going. Um, the last song is a song that's going to be... This really... Tonight is going to focus on one real... like Well, two things. Number one, praying my violin stays in tune the entire time. That thing will stay in tune all year right? I cannot pick it up for six months, it'll stay in tune. The second I go from one room to another, uh, that's when violins get funny on you. Uh, you know, traveling in the back, I can get there and it could be completely detuned. I bought my, brought my little tuner. I'll tune it before I go in because there's no way I'll be able to tune it on stage. Uh, and it's very close to the uh, full pitch of 440. It's a little bit flat uh, because when it does need tune, that, that violin, it's my lion head violin, about 150 to 200 years old. I really shouldn't be bringing that thing out on the stage, but it's too good not to share. You know what I mean? Uh, the maker of that violin 200 years ago would be happy to see this thing, regardless of what screeches and squelches are coming out of it. Just to know that people took... Again, when you take pride in something you do, uh, and you have ownership in, in that you know, investment in that creation of something, uh, I would love to have something that I built last more than 200 years. You know what I mean? And still be used. You know what I mean? Still be admired. Uh, like, that, that to me is legacy. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's something that uh, people could only wish for. You know, like, I'm sure Michelangelo is, like, in his grave going, eh, you guys could roll over. You got nothing on me. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah, there's my life's work. You know, my great, 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 great grandchildren are going to finish that for me. You know what I mean? That's the kind of... That's meaningful in life, you know, like that kind of investment into something. Uh, some people put it into violins and other instruments and other things, artworks, whatever it be. Uh, but is a violin not an artwork, a science project, and a, a carpentry all in one? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and musical creation. Like, the, the, it's kind of a wonderful instrument in that sense. But it, tonight's really going to hone in on one real specific spot for me. And that's the third song I'm playing. Now, this third song is a death metal song from the band called Evoluti. Evoluti, Evoluti, Evoluti. Wait, Jeff Jenman, you out there? Where's Jeffy? Jeffy. I'm going to give Jeffy a honk. Better be out there, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's not out there, you bastard. Uh, anyway, um, long story short, this song that I'm doing is called King. It's about basically the time in the Roman Empire where... You know, people know about the the Gauls, which were the precursors to the Celts kind of thing. Uh, and it was about 500, 600 uh, BC, I believe. And basically, uh, this guy was a badass. He, he ruled pretty much on the far side of the Alps between Italy, Italy and Switzerland, 
where modern day Italy and Switzerland are now. And uh, yeah, the, he, he was kicking the crap out of the Roman Empire. That's basically what he was doing. Um, you know, a tyrant to the tyrants. You know, it's kind of so it makes the song pretty epic. And it's I love history based stuff. Uh, coming down the line on the mandolin, possibly is either going to be uh, Teresa's Home Garden Beyond and uh, Sabaton's latest release, fairly re recent release, Bismarck. I'm learning that one on the mandolin. It will be, sorry for the language, fucking epic. <laughs> I can't wait to do it. Uh, I just kind of hummed some of the uh, some of the uh, course there tonight, uh, working on the mandolin, or today, working on the mandolin. I was like, when I get that all, that, that all arranged out, it's going to be epic. Uh, same with the Home Garden Beyond. And you know what I'm loving about these songs? These uh, kind of metal history songs, Viking metal songs and stuff like that, is that it's so different that I know nobody's heard it before. And, well, maybe nobody, but, you know, like not nobody, but obviously these people are heard. Uh, but you know that the, the, most of the people in front of the crowd, in front of you, have not heard that before. So it is really cool to do different renditions on stuff. Uh, as for last week when I did Cowboys from Hell, although the crowd wasn't as crazy as it was the week before that, it was still a good crowd last week, a very fun crowd last week, uh, which usually always is, but it was it was a lively enough crowd. But the week before, yeah, I wish I would have gotten that one on video. Uh, shame uh, shame on me not doing, you know, hitting the, the play on my, uh, a record on my uh, uh, GoPro 7, but... Yeah, because that was a really row rowdy crowd, and, and I know tonight would have been a great night for it because it, the, I, I'm anticipating a very rowdy crowd tonight. And I did, my dad just let me know that it's um, construction holiday, so uh, I can imagine t tonight's going to be packed. Glorious. So the songs I, you know, the songs I have tonight. Well, the first one is a pirate song, you know, Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, people would be asking, "Why is the rum gone, laddie? The rum? Why is it gone? You know." And these are going to be the questions torturing people's minds tonight while they're listening to these fiddle tunes. All of a sudden, I, I just need rum. Oh, uh, I haven't seen her in a while. The girl I went to school with. Nice to see her out and about. Um, uh, the other song, the Rasputin song, I'm anticipating a sing-along. I don't know if I'm going to dance along, but I will guide them and instruct them how to dance to that song. Why? Because it'll be epically funny. Uh, you could dance like a metalhead to this song, or you could dance like Boney M to this song. So, oh, fire guys, three, two, one. Hey, there they are. Uh, now, the third song, Evolutes King. Uh, that song is going to be very haunting. And what I pray is that the mics really cooperate with my violin tonight and don't just get hollow, hollow and squealy. Or whatever, or that uh, it's not just just bassy, 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 or thin, really thin, like no bass whatsoever. So I'm hoping that because if so, like that violin can really produce some. When I first bought it, you know, it, it probably sat on the wall for a long time, and probably sat in somebody's basement for even longer, for all I know. And uh, the thing about that is that when a violin sits for a long time, the dust I guess builds up pores of the wood and into the grains of the wood and it kind of stifles the sound and it takes like a literally like you can blow the thing out it don't matter it will take a year to a year and a half for the volume to start to come out of the like for the the fibers to shake uh the uh the, the, the rough stuff loose it will literally take that long and the thing about it is is um got a motorbike behind me <laughs> you tell this guy's itching to go uh but uh, the thing about it is it takes a while before the tone and the, and the, the, uh, the uh, sound comes out of the, the violin. That's why you hear the saying, a violin gets better, is like why it gets better with age. Uh, well, there's some truth to that, because this violin now is, is, is a belching lion of, of sound, you know what I mean? And uh, with the strings I got on it, uh, they, they sound really good. So whenever you do like really loud, you know, intonated, uh, harmonized, droning kind of long draw, bow draws on it, it really roars. I can feel this violin smiling when it's making sound. Um, and when it kicks in, it, it makes me smile, and I can feel it smiling. It's got a personality, I'll just tell you that. It's a dark, 
scary personality, but it's a big personality. And for such a dark sounding violin, it's actually, to me, it has a very happy spirit to it. Um, maybe it's just what it brings out in me. I don't know. You, you tell me. But um, it just, it just, it needs to be unleashed. It needs to be in front of people. It needs to, um, it needs to, uh, it just needs to, to do that. You know what I mean? And I think it brings out the best of me too. You know, like, because when it, it sounds good, I play better. And when it sounds better, uh, and I play better, it sounds better. You know what I mean? And I'm getting there. Now, singing the, the Evolutes King, as well as, um, you know, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, playing the violin part on that. The thing you have to keep in mind is this violin part is, you know, I'm, I'm basically mimicking blasting bass and heavy metal guitars, right? Really heavy guitars. So I don't, I can't quite do just the violin part. I don't quite know the violin part properly, right? I'm sure I, over time I'll get it, but I couldn't just play the violin part of the song, which is going to bring me to a, a tip and a, you know, maybe a point or a tip uh, in this video about instruments standing on the, their self. Sometimes you have to rearrange things so they work, and that might break you from form, that might break you from originality of a tune, and you might have to make it your own. If I were just to be, even if I could play the, the violin parts the way it was originally written, the song would be all full of holes because the violin doesn't play straight through. Uh, it only plays in a few parts. You know what I mean? There's a lot of rest for the violin. Now, Evoluti is a band that has uh, seven or eight members to it. Like, it's a big band. And they went through a lot of lineup changes. The way I think they work is basically they go on tour, they hire somebody on a contract, and then, you know, it's not like uh, Motley Crue or something like that where we were high school buddies and then we pulled in Mick Myers a little later on, and when we did, you know, we stuck together forever uh, until, you know, they lost Vince Neil for now and then he came back, right? Uh, this is more like uh, we're musicians, we have a project in mind, we're going to play, if you're going to be a hired professional, for XYZ many for length of a tour and after the tour if we like you we'll renegotiate your contract if we don't no hard feelings see you later and uh, that's how a lot of these big bands work the fact that this band can make enough money to hire seven people and road crew and all that is pretty epic to begin with and they went through a few violinists I think the original one was the best uh, obviously, they had uh, Anna Murphy from Cellar Darling, now, now from Cellar Darling. I think she put Evolutie on the map with the Call of the Mountain. Uh, that, that song is still so epically good. Uh, but again, it, it's not these... I love these kind of B bands in the sense like um, independent bands because they're just not... They're so uncookie cutter. You know what I mean? Like, you would never get this from Hollywood. You would never get this from the Los Angeles stuff. You know what I mean? You would, you would never get, like, Carrie B, uh, Carrie B, uh, Katy Perry or, uh, you know, uh, you know Justin Bieber singing songs like this. They, they don't know how. You know, they only know, here's the cookie cutter song that they're going to throw at you. Now, Taylor Swift, although I don't listen to these people, uh, she seems to write some of her own songs, whatever. But I think a lot of these artists, they just get to the point where it's like, hand me the song and I'll make it look good. Right, and it's always coming from a handful of writers. We saw this um, with Desmond Child and Bob Rock back in the '90s. Every metal band had. Don't get me wrong; I love the way Bob Rock uh, produced the Cult, Bob the Crew, and everything like that, and all these other bands. But the problem is, is everybody started sounding alike, right? And then, of course, uh, it, it just you lose uniqueness when you you get. And Desmond Child writes the same song over and over again. He writes excellent songs. Don't get me wrong. He wrote a lot of Bon Jovi songs. He wrote a lot of uh, cult songs. Almost every mega power ballad of the 90s was written by him. And not just the, the, the uh, power ballads, but, you know, uh, he collaborated, you know, and even the pop bands. Like, this guy was a busy man writing songs. And there are people that do that. They're musicians uh, like Kenny G types, you know what I mean? All they do is write music. That's all they do. They're like the Mozarts of their time, so to speak. Now, the problem you get is that 
when you get that, everybody sounds alike. This is the this is why Hollywood music, uh, the uh, mainstream music scene, is kind of dull. It works on like uh, low level journalism or something. You know what I mean? Uh, it's like uh, tabloid journalism for the mind. It's not like a good in depth book or something like that. Uh, it doesn't do that. Wow, there's a stream of traffic behind me. I'll slow down slowly just so this guy <laughs> doesn't ram into me. Um, was it, uh, so anyway, the one part of that song that is, I'm really going to, that the whole night is going to make or break for me. I mean, it's going to be a good night no matter what. Make or break. I mean, the, the violin could detune halfway through the first song, and then it's like, okay, well, I'll grab the guitar. Better luck next time. I mean, it's a jam, and I don't take it personally. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, mishaps and failures, and miss notes, miss chords, uh, out of time, <laughs> break a string, all that stuff happens, you know? But when it doesn't, if I could pull off the part I want to pull off, I think it's going to be very epic. It's just one, it's the shredding part of the violin in, in Evoluti's King. I think that one, that part is just going to be, uh, I, I don't do it the same way because I don't know how she's playing it uh, note for note. I don't, I don't know how she's doing it. Uh, but I got the theme of it, and I don't unfortunately have that speed metal drummer there, and I know there'll be a drum kit there tonight, but the, the violin I'm playing is not mic'd, so I wouldn't be able to have a drummer on stage. He'd drown me out. Uh, anyway, so, but that said, I, I, I could pull that together so that the instrument can stand alone on itself. I think what's going to make it epic is the fact that I'm playing and singing the violin at the same time. The rest of the song, that I, the way I rearranged it, it's not, it doesn't sound that bad. Like, it sounds pretty good. The chords are nice and dark and scary. Um, the, uh, the bass isn't th that crazy. And the, um, the arrangement, is, it seems fairly close to sort of mimic the song that, I, uh, that I'm doing. Uh, it just won't be quite in the same key. I'll be doing it in the key of D minor pretty much. And then D minor and... Yeah, I guess it'll be uh, the key of D, D minor. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, the key of D minor is pretty much the essence of this song. So, yeah, the most dramatic chord you can play is usually a D minor. You know, C minor, D minor, A minor. These are like the dramatic chords, right? Uh, I'm not saying there isn't more frightening and terrifying chords out there, but these are the big ones. These are the ones that. Um, well, regardless of instrument you play it on, it always seems to be a haunting sound, right? And uh, the lyrics mixed with these kind of scary, goth, gullish uh, lyrics, um, yeah, I think it's going to be just, it's going to fit nice and then throwing in a speed metal violin solo <laughs> standing on its own in, in, near the end, tail end of it, I think it's just going to make it really, 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 really so that's my hopes, uh, that people will really enjoy it. Uh, but either way, maybe people will, maybe people won't. It really, and but tonight it won't matter who's ahead of me. If I have intergalactic, the only thing is when I, you get intergalactic space at me uh, ahead of you, he tends to clear the bar. But people are getting so used to him, he's actually improving. Uh, his name's Derek. He's a nice guy, but like I said, he's got, he's got his problems, right? Um, but he's so bad. <laughs> He's good, you know what I mean? But I just admire the fact that even with his handicap, he gets up there and he does it. So when he does that, I'm like, good for him. You know what I mean? I I, I, I really don't have... The, I would be... I feel I would feel ashamed to get up and leave while he's playing. Maybe for somebody who doesn't know, know his situation or whatever. Uh, and I'm not virtuous. I'm just like, no, I admire this guy for doing that. Yes, he's horrible. But he's good horrible. You know what I mean? And the people that are really phenomenal musicians, it's hard enough for them to go up there and pull off something epic. You know, you got to hand it to the guy. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those things, right? So when that's going on, the other thing that I'm looking at is that it won't matter tonight because 
the uh, incident. Oh, I'm at 444441. Oh, damn, I got a pile of traffic behind me. <laughs> oh, no. Everybody go by. Come on, just pass me. Just go, go, go. I want to be able to get the four on there. Hurry up. Do it now. We're on the straight stretch. Everybody go. Go. I need to be able to pull over and get the four. Everybody's mad at me because I'm doing 80. Ah, I'm at 444, 4442. Hang on. <laughs> ah, dude, like, of course there has to be a gazillion uh, vehicles behind me. I ain't speeding for you guys. I'm getting this. Sorry. Like I said, I would be cutting it off. I know I'm driving whatever I'm doing a bad thing, do not do what I do here. But uh, this is epic. I got one vehicle behind me. Four, 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 three. Nobody behind me. I'm getting this. I'm getting it, guys. <laughs> we'll talk about standalone instruments in one second. Three is turning over. I gotta get off this straight stretch though. There we go. Four, 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 three, and should be about a kilometer pretty soon. Okay, do your turn. Ready to go. Do it. Do it. Four, 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 all fours. I gotta change lane while I'm doing this. Yeah, I know, I'm not living it dangerously. Fours across the, the board. Okay, cool. You know, the bottom fell out of my camera. Oh well. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> Here, so the mileage four, 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 four. four. Cool. <laughs> yes, Mickery. I know you guys can't see me because of the. There we go. Probably couldn't see what I was doing there anyway. I'm all over the road now. I better. Okay, so, here we go. So what I did was bad here. Don't, don't do what I was doing. Everybody's in a rush tonight, though. Holy jeez. Uh, okay, so an instrument standing alone. I talked about this before. Okay, so let's say you're in Leonard Skinner, right? You got, what, an eight, nine-piece band there, or seven-piece band, whatever it is. You're in Evolution. You're in a seven-piece band. Everybody's got their part. Uh, they, all these... Uh, Bye bye, bye bye, four, 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 four. We're now at a five. <laughs> Seems like that five came up a lot quicker than the four did. <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, so, here, watch my speed here. Um, yeah, so you got an instrument, okay? And you want to play a song. So, you got a band that's usually got all these holes filled in, so many levels of instruments, so many different. Uh, uh, you know, uh, key, uh, what's called, uh, you know, tenor, alto, soprano, whatever, uh, bass, I mean, all, all your, you know, like every, every instrument fills that pitch range, right? And you can assign parts like an orchestra. Okay. You guys are going to, you know, on the mandolin are going to be covering the high end. Uh, you guys on the fiddle are going to be covering the high end. You on the mandolin, or you on the bagpipe, and you on the flute are going to be covering the high end. Okay, the bass player and the drummer and, and the, the, the rhythm guitar are going to be covering the low end. Uh, and then if there's a, a hurdy-gurdy, they're going to be covering somewhere in between. So you can see all the depth of range that's going to be coming with these instruments, right? And then you got the vocals and stuff like that. But when you're one person and you want to cover a song that has all these different parts in it, 
Well, you're trying to cover basically a metal orchestra or an orchestra, or like Leonard Skinner, you got three guitar players. Iron Maiden, you got three guitar players. How do you cover that? Well, you got to be able to make the instrument stand on its own, right? Not so easy. So how do you do that? Well, there's a trick. And the trick is not as hard as you think, actually. What you do is you rearrange the song to not have holes in it. I call it the Jimi Hendrix effect. Where you could take a Jimi Hendrix song, okay, any Jimi Hendrix song, okay, and play it as an acoustic. Do any rendition you want out of it. Still shred. Still play the some of the leads. Because a lot of Jimi Hendrix stuff was the rhythm. The lead was the rhythm. You know? And it, it, he just made it flow so that it really he didn't really need a second guitar player there because the song flowed, right? It never lost it never lost momentum. So where you get a song uh, that if you were to play it as original, and I've seen people do this at jam nights and stuff, mainly jam nights. I've never seen anybody do this on stage as a professional musician. Where they'll play a song, okay, and they're playing the guitar part, and whoo, Mr. Pepe Le Pew's out tonight, and uh, they're playing the song, okay, and they're playing it well, and everything like that, and they're singing, and they're playing, and then the guitar solo comes up, and they kind of, they stop the rhythm and go into the guitar solo. Now, the guitar solo itself is really cool. The problem is, is the song completely, there's no more song anymore. It's just a guy dabbling uh, some notes out there. Uh, there's nothing to hold it together because the guitar solo wasn't, it's not, it's meant to complement the rhythm. It's not meant, it wasn't meant to uh, stand alone on its own. The song will fall apart. There's no tempo to it. There's no beat to it, uh, whatever. So it just, you can't do that the way it was originally intended, you know, uh, and not just, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, it could be a flute solo, it could be a violin solo, it could be anything. So it, it won't, the, the instrument will not stand on its own. There's going to be a big hole in the song. And it's something I learned a long time ago when, um, you know, about improvising and stuff like that, is to keep a steady flow so there's no holes in the song. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the instrument has to cover what's not, what's not, what's not there, right? So if you don't have your speed metal drummer there, you still have to hold the tempo. So you might not be able to do the whole notes. You might have to double up on your notes and go with 16th or 30 seconds or whatever it might be, 64th, if, you, if it's a real speed song. Uh, you know, uh, you might have to do that. The mandolin is pretty sweet, so is the violin, because the way it's tuned, it's a naturally, uh, an instrument that does leads naturally. Meaning that you could be playing, for example, uh, an E minor on a mandolin, and still do a run on the uh, the E string as a solo. And for so many songs, it still maintain the rhythm. The song doesn't fall apart. It just might not have the drive the acoustic guitar has, uh, stuff like that. Sometimes you can get a little bit on the acoustic, but if you're traveling on an E, like a, a big E chord, on, like a big, say, E major chord uh, on, on, the, on a guitar, you know, Johnny Cash style, and then you gotta cut into a solo. You, you can't just leave that big E chord. You gotta, you gotta keep it flowing, or else the song fl uh, flies apart. So either that, you, the only way around that is to like keep the drive going, and then throw in a little wiggly gilly, and then go right back to the chord as quickly as possible. So you have these like little leads in between Hendrix style, like da 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 you know, you know what I mean? It doesn't just fall apart. You can do that at the end of the song, uh, i.e. the uh, proverbial train wreck. Uh, not in a bad way, but like, that's what you call it, a train wreck. I do a lot, I love doing, you know, smash and bash train wreck ends on songs. I do it a little bit too much sometimes. Uh, just because, you know, you build up the crowd and everybody's going, woo, ah, woo, whatever. Uh, so there's that. Now, that said, Getting an instrument to stand on its own is hard enough where you don't need anything else to back the instrument to keep the song together. You will see this in solo classical pieces. Somebody playing a Paganini song on a violin. You don't need an uh, orchestra there. It's nice if you have it, you don't need it. Uh, Valvini's uh, uh, Four Seasons, uh, uh, Summer Presto. Uh, you can do that on, uh, on the, you can do that by yourself on the violin, guitar, whatever. 
uh, you don't need a backup band to hold it together. Um, another event, uh, we call it, uh, oh, what's it? I think I did. Uh, I'll think of it, I'll think of it. It's a Hungarian tune. Uh, anyway, you can play it as a solo, or you can play it as a, you know, as a rhythm. Like, it, it's the same, the song doesn't fall apart. Uh, I'm trying to think of it. That one. Uh, I can't believe I, I, I like, uh, Cizards, Cizards. Well, it's not how it's pronounced, I call it Cizards, but wait, but it, it's, it's pronounced differently because it's a Hungarian name. Uh, but it, it's like, uh, and if you know what I'm talking about, like that one, you can hear it with piano and a violin, you can hear guitar players, mandolins player, player, death metal. Uh, it's like Hall of the Mountain King. One or many, you know what I mean? Like. Uh, Emma Looney's Hall of the Mountain King is really cool, though. I think it's my favorite version. Um, so, yeah, getting an instrument to stand on its own, whether it's the guitar, the guitar is pretty easy because you can just use chords. You know, you can omit the leads and use chords. A lot of people do that for a lot of songs. And, you know, you can get away with it because you're holding the song together. And sometimes people just need to hear the theme of the song or the, um, the actual progression, chord progression of the song. They don't necessarily have to hear each note picked out, right? So uh, that, that's kind of some of the things you look at as well. So for me, this guy passed me on a double. Why is everybody in such a rush? Like I'm doing like 80. This guy passed me on a double line. What a moron. Uh, but anyway, um, that's the thing, hey, you get a long weekend, everybody's in a rush and being stupid. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so with, with that said, tonight, like I say, the first thing I did was, can I put that song together as an instrumental without singing it? All three songs were a big, definite, yep. Yeah, I was able to do that. So then, the second was, can I throw lyrics two of the songs and uh, make it work and it was a definite yep now the third was can I make these songs sound really cool while I'm singing and playing them and my hopeful thing is as long as I do my job and my violin stays in tune and uh, I don't get winded <laughs> while singing as long as I don't play too fast there's only one part that I got to do the speed metal part on uh, so to speak the rest as long as I don't play too fast, yeah, it's going to hold together just nice. Because the problem is I'm singing tonight with my man voice. When you sing in your man voice, you get winded. You get breath right after the first song. You cannot eat a pizza before you play these songs live, uh, whether you're playing guitar or violin. It, they will wind you. Like They require a very masculine, powerful, yeah! kind of voice, right? And uh, I love that kind of voice. I think I do it well. There's nothing, uh, there's nothing uh, a gold tone about it. It's very powerful. It's very masculine. It's very testosterone. -ous. It's very epically brutal. It's very commanding. It's very empowering. It's very, um, you know, it fills the room. It's very, pay attention to me. I'm singing. You know, epically, you know what I mean? About a conqueror, you know what I mean? About a uh, Rasputin. Rah, rah! You know what I mean? So, like, that's... It's de it, it demands your audience to enjoy themselves. That's the epic part. And I think, I think you know, it's just like... It's an experience. And I know last time I did Rasputin, I kind of botched it a little bit because... Um, something I said, you know, when you bring out a song too early... Uh, Sometimes, you know, you'll find out the hard way on stage. You, you jump a line, whatever. 
and that happens. When, you know, so what I say is practice a song not till you get it wrong, uh, can't, uh, till you get it right, but till you can't get it wrong. And I think I got these ones down till I can't get them wrong. So in other words, my brain won't even be functioning in the sense of, uh, you know, uh, what's coming next? What's coming next? If, you know, my singing part is going to be on autopilot. I only have to pay attention to intonating on the violin, uh, and and not, you know, not you know, just keeping my timing. So it won't require savage amounts of concentration to pull the two together, which means you can let it flow a little more. You know, it's like it'll just flow. Basically, I got two choruses or uh, two two verses. Uh, three courses and a speed metal violin solo. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I got to get through. That's it. That's it. And do it as well as I can. And uh, yeah, you know, I'm at the point now where, like I say, I really do have to get a, a show booked, whatever. And, you know, I'm going to do these until I find something else. I wasn't able to get a hold of those other places today. Uh, but you know, you know, you can't rush these things. They they take as long as they take to set up. Now that said, uh, will I ever play this violin live again? Uh, probably, but maybe not in a bar. Uh, the next, well, it's hard to say. Uh, from here on out, I think it's the electric violin. Uh, you know, take advantage of <laughs> of that because it just makes life so much easier. Um, and uh, I do want to cycle it every couple of weeks, so I'm going to go back to the mandolin for a bit. Uh, maybe for maybe about another two weeks after this. I might pull out the violin one more, then go back to the acoustic guitar. It's just because, um, you know, like the mandolin, it, people are like astounded by it because they're just so not used to what it is. You know what I mean? Many of them know what it is, but some of them have never heard a mandolin live before. They're like, wow, I've seen them, but I've never heard them. You know, I've heard them on the TV and on the radio, but I've never seen them. So when you do that, right, uh, one of the things you, you get is that it, you're now entertaining people because you're giving them a treat of something they don't normally experience. And like I say, when you're in your room practicing, yes, you are a musician. When you're in a studio, you're a musician first. Uh, but when you're in, on a stage, you're an entertainer first, a musician second. So. Once you know your job as a musician, then it's a matter of getting people involved in the song. I love introducing my songs. Now, on a jam night, it's hard to build up uh, a precursor to the song. This song is about this, that, and the other thing. So you got, you got to, you know, you got to be mindful of your time and stuff like that. And I'm usually about a 10 minute range, 10, 15 minute range. You get 15 minutes. I usually try to be off there for 15 minutes. Uh, if I have the night to myself, I usually build up the beginnings of the song. It's about this and this and this, and then I start to slowly play, and then get people really interested into the story, and then you bang into the song. I find that works very well. When I do uh, Tale of Two Ships and uh, Farewell to Nova Scotia live, I know that one's going to blow people away. It's going to be epic. I think uh, the way I want to do the Bismarck song live, I think that's going to be epic. Um, I think the next time I do uh, Nemo live, uh, on the mandolin because it sounds so much like the piano and it's so eerie and whatever and it's such a great tune like it's so catchy you know what I mean uh, Call of the Mountain I would like to redo that one again uh, maybe I'll redo it on, on the violin now it's going to take me a while to figure out something really epically good on that so that it just sounds good you know what I mean oh that little birdie came that close you nearly died you nearly died little birdie um, so yeah, I love the range of possibilities, and I love also throwing in front of people, like, where people are like, weren't you playing the guitar last week or a mandolin last week? I said, yeah, how many instruments do you play? Whatever I touch, I try to play, you know? That's my answer. It's like, I, I don't know. Hey, how many instruments can you hand me? <laughs> uh, you know, the wind instruments, I got to admit, that's a different animal. That one's hard. I used to be able to play saxophone a little bit. Um... If I can ever swing the cash far enough ahead that I could rent the cello, I check it out from rent it, renting the cello. Uh, but there's two epic instrumentals I want to do on the cello. One is called uh, Julie O. If you haven't heard it, just type in cello Julie O. I would like to do it on the violin, but I don't think the violin will do it 
proper. And I, I don't even think the mandolin will do it proper. The mandola, yeah, it would because it's in the same, you know, similar tuning, uh, a lower tuning. The guitar doesn't seem to be able to do it quite justice. Uh, the song was written in 1988. I can't remember the composer, but it's called Julie O. And uh, it's so epically well done. Every version I've heard of it is just spectacular. Uh, there's one guy does beatbox while playing the, the, the uh, cello and, and uh, at the same time. I mean, that, that was spectacular. And then, you know, just it's just a good tune. I would love to do that one and Top Gun and then sing um, uh, Texas Co uh, Hippie Coalition's uh, uh, Papa Hill. <laughs> I think that would be very epic on a cello. Uh, or something else, I don't know, some some epic metal song on, on uh, but I, I could really hear that one on the cello for some reason. It just, uh, it just it would work, you know. Uh, and then those other two songs, and then Top Gun uh, on the cello. There's one guy who does Top Gun on the cello, and it's epically good. It's the only guy I've seen do it on the cello on YouTube and, and, and whatever. But yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm here, just about, in a little town. And uh, the first thing I'll do before I go in is uh, make sure that my violin didn't get bounced out of tune and pray it holds in tune. Then I'm going to go in and get on the list. I have a, I have a hunch that the list is going to be busy tonight. Uh, tonight I'm going to aim for spot number three. Um, but it doesn't really matter where I go tonight. It's going to be... It's just I know the band's there and I want the band on stage for the later songs. Because, uh, in fact... What would really work is if I get just in front of the band, because I'm going to get people very hyped up. Even with the, scar the uh, dark, scary, creepy uh, King tune. Uh, it just, it just, that song is going to haunt people. It's going to be, uh, and if it comes out the way it is on my, uh, just on my PA system, and I only got like a 15 watt PA system. If it comes out that way, I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, uh, it, that's going to be pretty epic. It's going to be, uh, that low G, uh, G and D, uh, part, slow part, beginning part, the very tail end of it, it's very haunting, it's just, it's creepy, it's scary, it's dark, it's dreary, and then, uh, yeah, it's gonna be, I get to shred a little bit at that end, end part too. Um, yeah, so, but the, 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 the show piece tonight is the, uh, the party tune is going to be the Rasputin tune, Rasputin tune getting everybody singing the la 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 and ra ra Rasputin, you know what I mean? That's going to be crazy. Oh wow, so many people out tonight. It's going to be, my hunch in my bones is my violin, my Lionhead violin tonight is going to like rock the place and that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, I think people are going to be in extreme party mode tonight, especially, uh, hopefully there's a parking spot. Road sign! This road sign is going to take out somebody's mirror. Okay, you got one of those divider signs, and now, uh, this is freaking slalom, man. What the hell's going on here? It's like, it's almost like, yeah, it's like slalom. This is crazy. Oh, well. <laughs> Where am I going to park? Oh my god, it's full already. Oh no, it's one of those nights. I'll make it work. Oh yeah, it's packed. Oh no. Oh no, in a good way, but it's like, okay, where, where, why, why is everybody parked like that? You can get 10 more vehicles in here, you, you. And I can't park there. Could I squeeze into that? What? Where the hell's the trees coming from? What? Yeah, did, wow, they did uh, some parking lot stuff. The very last spot here. All right, CRV, let's do this. Yeah, I'm by the dumpsters. It's like they got whatever they did with the ditch there. Uh, hopefully that's not too soft. Can that guy get out? Oh, the... Okay, I didn't sink. I didn't go. Okay, good. <laughs> if I come back and my CRV is, uh, you know, uh, what you call it, sunk down to the axle, I'll know what happened. Nobody to blame but myself. Put my windows up. 
All right, good dad. And I will tell you guys how it went when I'm done.